Good morning. Thank you so much for inviting me, and thank you for the kind introduction. I feel deeply honored to be here, and I'm also very grateful that system thinking seems to be uh, at long last recognized where it should be recognized. I, uh, before I um, start my program, I want to say one thing. System thinking is a huge body of knowledge. Uh, it deals with complexity. Uh, it is complex. Um, it is th apparently theoretically, even if it is intensely practically an application. So it, yeah, uh, it could be appearing theoretically for you. I had the choice of giving you of picking out two or three things and making them easily understandable, or do a marathon of giving you an overview. I chose the, mar the marathon, but that means you should just sit back, relax. The thing is going to be filmed. You can recoup what you don't understand, and anybody uh, who ever listened to system thinking never understands everything immediately. So don't worry about that. Try to get a visual and intuitive impression of uh, what system thinking is about and how it could help us. I'm going to uh, t uh, say a few words about the personal journey, how I got into system thinking. Um, then I'm spending uh, some time on worldview in general to contextualize system thinking, why it is important. Uh, then I give you a tour de force about the essence of system thinking, or the essence of the essence of system thinking, so that you get a bit of an idea what it is about. And then I'm talking about two types of systems, which I think are of importance uh, from uh, the inward and outward uh, looking uh, legislative and legit, uh, legis, uh, late year, uh, uh, perspective. Let me start with the personal journey. You have heard in the introduction that I worked at the Institute for Futures Research for about 15 years uh, on socioeconomic, social political forecasting. We realized that education gets worse, unemployment gets worse, pandemics get worse. We studied the problems. And uh, we became aware that uh, if you're looking at the proposed solutions and strategies, they were totally inadequate and uh, unable to solve those problems. And my favorite quote here is that in 2009, uh, after the finance summit, the G20 said, we know what brought about the finance crisis. We don't know what we need to do about it. So what did we do? We threw three trillions at the problem. And the next crisis is just around the corner, just because we don't know what to do. We knew that 30 years ago, and this is what propelled our institute to explore system thinking. Uh, we learned at the feet of the masters, that is Eckhoff, Meadows, uh, who was quoted, uh, Senge, and Gajadagi, many others. We brought them to the country, we went to them, we learned. I was fascinated by the body of knowledge, but I realized it's insufficient and very disjointed to be practical in application. So I left the institute and started uh, a program, um, seven years of PhD research together with the biometrics group that was an interdisciplinary group that looked at system thinking from the different disciplines and we integrated the different approaches into one internally consistent and coherent meta system theory, which we call biometric system theory. And then I spent another 15 years, now these things are parallel, I'm not quite that old. <laughs> okay, so they, they go parallel. Um, to do research, um, the iteration between taking the body of knowledge in management consulting in the private and public sector um, to apply it, and if we hit problems we couldn't answer, we brought it back to the group to develop more theory and so on. Uh, I did a lot of teaching at those programs mentioned where I was challenged by managers and I learned a lot through teaching. And of course I did management consulting in the public and private sector. System thinking, I believe, is the worldview of the information age. Now to make you understand um, what the role of a 
uh, worldview is, it, the different, different ages have different worldviews, and the cultural, economic, political institutions evolve according to that worldview. And I want to make a little comparison here, just that we know that we are on the edge of another transformation in humanity. I would like to compare the agrarian, the industrial, and the information ages. Now, if we look at the agricultural age, one of the core values is community. It is interrelations, personal interrelations. The education system implies we are learning from the elders. It is based on tribal, ethnic affinity. Uh, and the institutions are community-based. The level of technology in the agrarian age was uh, the implement. You see here an MEI that stands for matter or material, E for energy, I for information. So the implement is a material thing. Man or an animal provides the work. What really brought about the industrial age was the technological development uh, to the machine. And what the machine does, it embodies energy in the technology. In other words, the machine does the work. And that gives rise to a completely new paradigm. Suddenly, mass production was possible. Efficiency became the norm. We got into the growth mentality. The more, the better. This is typical industrial age. And our institutions became mass-based national institutions. Mass education. Everyone must have the same kind of education. Mass media. There were two types, that of the left and the right, because those were the two kinds of ideologies that permeated the industrial age. Mass-based democracy. Now, I want to, and we had two kinds, the socialist version and the capitalist version, but both are mass-based. One man, one, or one person, one vo vote, um, the masses. Very industrial age. Now, what the concept of mass means is one equals another. Not diversity, but sameness. And this kind of thinking permeates still our consciousness. Our institutions that we have now are still based on mass consciousness. Uh, and all our institutions are starting to crumble. There sit the kids in the education system being bored by uh, the kind of institution we have inherited from the last age. We are sitting in a mass democracy environment where, um, as they say in Europe, the middle has all colors, uh, blue, red. Every political party practically has the same um, agenda. Uh, <laughs> there are many hung governments, and we have heard the shocking figure of 15% that Mr. Skosana mentioned earlier as the trust uh, in, uh, in parties and uh, in uh, the legislative institutions. What this indicates is we are on the break to a new era, namely the information age. Now, what is different in the information age? First of all, the technological development uh, is that of the automate. The information is embodied in the technology. This is what makes it different. And those of you who have watched TV the last few days, the ethical question of should we allow the drones uh, uh, to, to select the targets, to select uh, you know, who should be eliminated. So the machine suddenly, or the automate, makes these kind of um, uh, decisions. The core values that we're dealing with is customization. We all have our apps and we are all using and selecting the gadgets and the goods and the destinations of holiday and whatever uh, uniquely suitable to us. There's no such a thing as a mass mentality anymore. Even if in terms of numbers, 
my unique car is shared by more people than uh, have ever been produced in the industrial age. This doesn't matter. It is all about customization. It is about my unique point of view. I want to be heard as everybody else. So this is what is new. The ideology of the left and right has died with the collapse of the Berlin Wall, and what we are seeing now is the clash of civilizations. Um, the uh, religious uprisings, the uh, different points of view, the different groups want to push their own agendas. And as I said earlier, the middle, the political middle has all colors. Everybody talks the same agenda. Our institutions need to be diverse, and they are getting more and more diverse, but we are struggling. We are struggling. Those are structural problems we are dealing with, and they're international. National government is an outflow of the industrial age. Our economy is international. A national government has no control over its supply chains that run through it, which span continents and uh, countries and allow the corporates to move between nation states and hold nation states to random, if we are looking at the recent Greece crisis, etc. We are living in a different era and we need to take a wide view of uh, what is the role of a government. And I believe system thinking can help us in, in that. <clears throat> 